Anybody have announcements before we start? Okay. I have a few of you know that. So there are offering envelope boxes um, back on the counter. Um, if anybody needs one, take one, but also sign the paper Ruthie made with the number and also what color the um, envelope is because we, we're using up old ones, so we have a variety of things and we want to make sure we get everybody's, you know, keep track of everything correctly. So, and if you're at home and you would like envelopes, um, just let me know and we'll make sure you get them. So we'll either drop them off or, or something. So um, um, envelopes are great because they help us to be very regular in our giving. They remind us, oh, we missed two weeks this month or whatever, and to keep up with our offerings. So um, I use a check every month and that works for me, but sometimes envelopes work better for other people and that's great. So we have plenty um, if you would like them. Um, so boys, do you want to take the um, um, bucket and the envelope around? Okay, so. Um, I have, oops, um, just leave that bucket there. Um, there's a bucket up here for change for Communion Sunday. I'm just going to leave that here, and after worship, you can bring it up. The envelope is for the, um, oh, are you going to do the bucket? Um, the envelope, wait a minute, is for, um, uh, we're going to buy pizza for the shelter, um, and our day is next week. Have you talked to them yet? Are they back in the shelter? Gotcha, yes, and I haven't talked to anybody this week. I think they might be back at the shelter now. Um, so, but either way, we're going to um, provide dinner for them. The bucket is for the, um, flood, uh, the flood buckets for UMCOR. So if you have a uh, check or $25, you want to buy a whole bucket or part of a bucket or whatever, um, or cash, you can put that in the bucket. So, all right, you go ahead, Weston. Cooper, you want to go? Why don't you go this way first? So go ahead and go that way. So, yeah. Just don't drop the money out of there, Weston. So they're both marked if you get confused. And then, um, just to add more confusion, next week is Super Sunday, so bring a, a can of soup and a dollar. Um, and if you're at home and you'd like to provide that, again, we'll figure out a way to get it here um, or to pick it up or you can drop it off. Um, and um, let's see. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention, and I included this in one of the emails, but um, our, the scholarship information for, the, uh, for our conference um, is on the BWC website, Baltimore Washington Conference website. And um, um, anyway, you have to be a member of a church um, and, um, and full-time in college. So uh, if any of our kids out there need that, want to do that, um, that would be great. We can, uh, we can work that out. All right. Nice. All right. Weston, don't spill it. So do we got it? Okay, all right, got it. So, all right. And then, okay, Weston, bring it back up and put it on the front pew here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, put it there on the front pew, both of them, guys. Just put it there on the front pew. Weston, put it on the pew over there. Gotcha, okay. All right, we got that. Any other announcements? Okay, um, let's stand for our call to worship. When we become church members, we promise to faithfully participate in the ministries of our congregation by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. You have entrusted us with gifts time, talent, energy, money, money, and ask us to use them to build your kingdom. With thanks and praise, we respond to your call. We bring these gifts you have given, returning your generosity, paying it forward. We offer ourselves, our lives, our hopes and fears, our dollars and our house. We commit ourselves to work for your world, to love and serve wherever you call. We ask your blessing on this, your church, as we seek to follow you with heart, mind, and soul. Let's be doers of the word and not hearers only. Let's make our church and our faith healthier by practicing these promises. Our first hymn this morning is, O Spirit of the Living God.
Let's join together in prayer. Gift-giving God, you call us together with our different gifts, our different ideas, our different tastes. You call us together to share what makes us special, to build each other up, to serve each other in love. You call us together, knowing that we need all parts of the body if we are to be made whole. You call us together to sing, to pray, to listen, to speak, to be refreshed so that we can go out and serve. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes to us from, oh, I forgot to turn that on, sorry, um, from 1 Corinthians. Um, from 1 Corinthians in the 12th chapter, we're talking about gifts today, the gifts that God has given us. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. Here ends the reading of our scripture for today. May God add understanding to all of us. So, Cooper and Weston, you want to come on up to the chair here? Come, we're going to and um, bring um, Batman and Superman, please. I mean, uh, Spider-Man. All right. Come on over here, please. All right, sit down. And you know what? Take off your mask for a minute, because since you're going you're gonna to help me with all of this, that way people can hear. Can you sit down, please? Turn around a little bit. You can take off your mask for a moment while you're sitting up here, away from everybody else. So what are we talking about today? Gifts. Let's yes. put this down for just a minute, okay, while we talk about the gifts. Okay, so let's start with these guys, okay? The superheroes. Yeah. So gifts are like superpowers, right? Yeah. All right, so what are their superpowers? Um, Spider-Man's superpower is he can shoot webs and I know, those webs just do the trick, don't they? Okay? So what about um, what about Batman there? Does he yeah. have some gifts? Yeah, yeah. He, he's really good at building gadgets. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. and he, and he, he can fly, and he can use gadgets to fly. He uses gadgets to fly. So, well, what about, like, Superman, another one? What kind of um, superpowers does Superman have? He can shoot lasers from his eyes. Ooh. And also, when he just blows like this, somebody freezes. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. He can, fr he can freeze people into ice? Oh my goodness, okay. So, okay, so, so those are all superpowers or gifts. Do you guys have gifts? Yes. What are your gifts? <laughs> I know. I know, you're really good at catching Pokemon and you can run super fast, right? And my superpower, and my superpower is that I'm really good at um, making stuff. Mm -hmm. And I made something out of cardboard and something really hard. And it, remember, um, there's somebody's on the other end and he's happy. And then somebody comes over and jumps on it and then she just goes flying in the air. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all right. I made that. Okay. I don't do it for people. Oh, you don't do it for other people. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then, at St. Paul, we were talking about this, too, you know. Um, and um, the movie Encanto, have you guys seen that? It's a new Disney movie. So, um, and it's, it's, it's pretty neat. So, um, tell them about that movie. It's about gifts, isn't it? Yeah. And each of the people in the movie have a different gift, right? So what, are, what gifts do they have? Um, the one, one gets stung by bees a lot, and one can 
um, heal you with a meal. Oh, okay. And All right. Isabella can make new flowers, and then the town that's next to them goes wild. Uh-huh, okay. And uh, Luis is super strong, and those are, are um, Mirabella's um, um, sisters, but Mirabella doesn't have a gift, and Dotus is um, the, um, her um, cousin, Mirabella's cousin, huh? and and she can hear like the sand that's really far away. Oh, okay. And she has a and gift she, of super hearing? Yeah, okay. And also, there's um, a, yeah, Peppa, I think it was called. And, it, and she can, she, she controls the weather and she rules the weather. Oh, like okay. Like if it's going to rain, she can make it sunny and have a rainbow. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. So let me, let me, give, give me a break here. Okay. So each of them has, each of the characters has a different gift. So one gal can grow flowers beautifully. One is super strong. I forgot about the one that has super natural hearing. So, but, okay. But the one girl, the, the, um, uh, the star of the show, they don't think she has any gifts. There's something wrong with her. But it turns out she does have a gift, right? And what's her gift? Bringing the family together. She brings the whole family together. That's her gift. And that's a really special gift, too. So, so even sometimes when it doesn't look like we have a gift, God gives us all gifts, right? All right. So, all right, let's stand up and we're going to say our prayer together. Okay, stand up. All right, ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Right. Put your mask back on. Put your mask back on, please. Good job. So yes, we're talking about gifts today. Um, we're in the, in the midst of um, a sermon series on membership, um, the membership vows that we make when we join church. And my plan through all of these sermons is to get you ready to join church if you haven't done that before, or to get us all reactivated as active members so that we're ready to just take off in ministry when it's safe for us to do that. We've been sitting around for a long time now and it's time to be the church in the world. There are five parts to the vows that we take for membership. We promise to support our church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Today we're concentrating on our gifts. And our scripture reading today comes from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Um, Corinth was considered to be way far out of the frontier far off from the early center of Christianity um, at its birthplace in Jerusalem. Wesson, you can't make noise like that, please. Okay, Wesson, put him down, be, be quiet. So Corinth was about 50 miles outside of Athens, so in Greece. Um, so it was kind of another world out there. Preachers passed through, to be sure, but the church didn't have any structure yet. There was no leadership of their own. There was no stability in that pagan culture for, for Christians to learn in. So some of those early Corinthians wrote to Paul, um, who had started their church, and they had this whole list of questions. Um, they asked him about marriage and divorce. They said, what kind of foods should we eat? Um, should women be in leadership? What is the resurrected of, uh, body of Jesus like? Um, it was a long list of things. And one of the questions they wrote was this one. What does the Holy Spirit do? And they wanted to know about spiritual things, like which spiritual things are better or more important than others. One writer said the Corinthians were the original enthusiasts, giving evidence of having swallowed the Holy Spirit feathers and all. Many of them seemed just, just 
enthralled, excited by the more dramatic external demonstrations of the Spirit, um, like speaking in tongues and prophesying and healing. And they ignored the quieter work of the Spirit um, that drew all the community members um, in um, together. So Paul had to explain to them that these are all gifts. Um, all these spiritual things are gifts from God. No one is greater than the other. It's not better to have speaking in tongues or, or some of the more dramatic stuff that it is to have quiet prayer as your gift. Um, everyone is given gifts by the Spirit. And those gifts are varied, as varied as they can be, and we are supposed to use them, not leave them sit. The word Paul uses as gifts here is rooted in the Greek word for grace. These gifts, these spiritual gifts, are the evidence of God's grace in our lives. They're not natural talent or preferences or opinions. They are not used for our own benefit, but for the common good. Um, they are not things that we show off either, um, but things that we can use to build the kingdom of God. Our gifts build up the body of Christ. So what are your gifts? Hmm? How do you use them? When I was writing this, I was reminded of um, the song that we all know, This Little Light of Mine. You remember the verse that goes, hide it under a bushel? No. Well, how are you using your gifts for the church? You're not going to hide them under a bushel now, are you? For our purposes today, I, I want to talk about two kinds of gifts. Um, one is spiritual gifts, our talents and abilities that God has given to us. And the other is our financial gifts, our treasures, which is another way to say how we offer our gifts to God. And really, they're the two sides of the same coin. The financial resources we have are ours because of the talents and abilities God has given to us. And both are gifts from God, and both should be used to give glory to God and support the ministries of the church. There are four different places in the New Testament where there are lists of spiritual gifts. Um, and they're all a little bit different, and if you read them all, you'll come up with 25 or 30 gifts. Um, and some are lists like this, wisdom and understanding and counsel and fortitude and knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. And some are a little bit more straightforward like this, love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, um, self-control. Let me share a little list of things that aren't spiritual gifts. Complaining, being judgmental, thinking we have all the answers. Hmm? You know, I wish these things were gifts because I tend to have those things in abundance like many of you do, and I'd love to share them, but that's not what our church needs. Maybe your gifts aren't exactly what you call spiritual either, but God can use them. For instance, this is the first one that came to my mind, I can scrub a mean floor. So it's not one of my spiritual gifts, but sometimes the church needs just that. Some of you have beautiful voices or can play an instrument in a way that makes it easy for the rest of us to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit here in this place. Some of you have patience for teaching. That's very much needed. Some of you can, can make a cookie or uh, make cookies or baked beans or some other wonderful dish for people that are struggling with grief or um, need a reminder to eat. Some of you quilt or sew or do other handiwork and can make beautiful things to share with others. Some of you have the gift of fixing things. Some of you have gifts for doing financial work. Some have gifts for organization and administration. Whatever your talents might be, we all have hearts to serve and hands to help. If you put all those talents together, we, um, we have something beautiful indeed as God transforms our gifts into something extraordinary. Maybe a question for us this morning is, why does God give us gifts? Hmm? When you think about it, God could have decided to, uh, even before the creation of the world or before God created you and me, that God could take care of things without us. God's kingdom could come and God's will could be done here on earth solely by God's power. But our God is the God who chooses to bring the, that kingdom into reality through the gifts and energies that ordinary folks like us choose to share. In other words, God expects us to use our gifts. 
We, on the other hand, too often think our gifts are not good enough or not important enough. Perhaps we don't think we have any gifts. I mean, we, we might be embarrassed or shy or unwilling to use our gifts in front of others. Sometimes we're too busy, or so we claim, or believe the old thing about charity begins at home and we choose to help those closest to us first, as if there's not enough to go around. In other words, we have excuses. We have lots of excuses. But giving is an act of faith. It's what we do. God chooses to transform the world through us, so every gift that we share with others is important. We never know when God might be using us. Just like I said last week about the importance of our presence here in worship, we never know when God might want to touch us through a hymn or a message or an announcement or a prayer, so we better not miss a Sunday. And giving is the same. We never know how or why God might use our gifts, however simple they might be, so we better be ready and never miss an opportunity to give. The church should be a safe place for us to discover and develop our gifts. Maybe you've heard the story of the pastor who was sharing with his congregation that they were going to have a special offering that day in worship. So he asked everyone to, who planned to give to stand up. And unbeknownst to the congregation, he had arranged for the organist to start playing the national anthem at this queue. So immediately the whole congregation stood up. They were all ready to give. I might use that idea sometime. But honestly and seriously, we usually make any serious talk of giving in church into a comedy. Um, and I can hear your eyes roll when I talk, talk about tithing. Maybe it's an uncomfortable, an uncomfortable feeling when we get, uh, we get when we talk about money. Um, in, in my family growing up, my parents refused to talk about money, my mother especially. And as she got older, she lied and manipulated when it came to money. And she was able to do that because money had always been the secretive thing. So when my kids were young, I kind of wanted to do the opposite. Um, I swung to the opposite extreme, and I talked about money a lot with my kids, even when they were little. And they would roll their eyes at me, too, because they were bored stiff. Um, now that they're adults, it's much easier to talk to them about money and be honest and open about it because we've always done it that way. Most of you know that Tom and I are tithers. Um, we give at least 10% um, of our income to the church. And it took us a while to get there. Um, but after we did, we've been converted. Um, and it all started because I knew I had to practice what I preach, and that's not always easy. But when Shannon, our oldest, um, was going off to college, and we were facing 12 years of college tuition for our three girls, crammed into eight years since they're close in age and they overlap, I knew that I had to get a tight handle on our finances. And when I did, I discovered that tithing would work. We didn't starve, we still had some vacations, the bills got paid, and we were able to see the hand of God working in our lives in a way that we've never seen before. Lillian Daniel, a pastor and author, tells her own um, tells her the story of her own journey toward tithing. And she says when she first looked at those figures, you know, written down on paper, it was just monumental. It was, it, it was just bog mind-boggling. And she thought it would be absolutely absurd, especially since she had to pay off student debt and had to pay for daycare along with all their other bills, uh, when she and neither she nor her husband made a lot of money. And one day she said she had a vision, and God was telling her to tithe. And it worried her a little at first because she wasn't used to visions, um, but she was very much moved by it. And as part of the vision, she saw this, this, this flamboyantly wrapped gift, this big gift. So she figured it was God telling her to tithe and that if she tithed, then she would get this wonderful gift, which she assumed would be some sort of big financial windfall. Only that check for that financial windfall never arrived. See, we don't tithe in order to get some blessing of wealth, like some TV preacher might tell you. We tithe because God calls us to do that. God never says, give me your tithe and I will make you rich and prosperous. As, as faithful people, whatever we do, it should be because we know it's the right thing to do, the faithful thing to do. We don't do it with a motive in mind or out of uh, a greed to get something better. 
Lillian Daniel puts it this way. She says, I later came to understand that the big, the big gift had already arrived. It was in the generosity of my parents and in-laws who stepped up over the years to cover camp fees and music lessons for our children. It was in the health of our kids, the kindness of friends who covered for one another in lean times. It was in the countless little gifts that come our way all the time. But most importantly, the gift was Christ. When she began to give generously, she opened our, her eyes to the gifts that God has been giving her all along. Sharing our gifts opens up us to that transformation. It helps us to move from a world of scarcity and fear to one of community and rejoicing. And unless we talk about tithing, unless, we, unless others see our example, it's unlikely that others will learn how to do it. There are no commercials for tithing. Very few accountants will tell us to tithe. You probably don't have any books on your shelf at home about tithing for dummies. In fact, if you tell your family and friends, they might laugh at you. But talk about it anyway and see what happens. Frankly, if everybody here tithed, even if everyone gave on a consistent basis every week, whether you're here or not, we wouldn't have a need for fundraisers, at least financially. Maybe a good thing that this pandemic is, um, uh, has taught us um, is that we have to remember to give whether we're present in church or not. It's been a reminder, the pandemic has been a reminder that giving is something we do from a place of faith, not a place of convenience, not a place of guilt that we have to put something in the plate when it passes us by. It's not about going to church, it's about being the church wherever we are. But while we're talking about giving and gifts, I want to tell you a few things about uh, church fundraisers. The money that we raise um, by doing these extra things goes to support the yearly budget. And we would not be able to keep the doors of the church open without those kinds of fundraisers. Now, there are some churches that don't do fundraisers at all because they know that a healthy church should be able to survive on the strength of their offering. And if they don't, they close. Some churches, on the other hand, do too many fundraisers, and they burn out their congregations by selling subs and pit beef and all sorts of other things, and that's not a healthy way to be either. So I come down in the middle um, because I really like fundraisers, our dinners and our breakfasts and the things that we do, because it brings us together to work in a way different than sitting here on the pews on Sunday morning. It may, I think it makes our church stronger when we have fun and laugh together and get to know each other and as we work hard together. I think that fundraisers can be a gift to the church and our community by bringing people together. Um, as, and we as members share our gifts at those events. Um, and when we get to, to meet and greet a whole other community outside these walls that become connected to our churches through our fundraisers. And I think that's a wonderful thing. If you're not helping out at fundraisers, <coughs> or if you just come for a minute to drop off something and uh, leave and think that's enough for your contribution, maybe you need to think about those membership vows that you made here once before. We need your gifts, all of them. The church needs our gifts. Or if you join in the future, if I haven't scared you off yet, um, that's what you're promising to do. If you've already joined, then you need to think about keeping your promises. As a member of the church, you're offering your gifts to God through the church, and God is eagerly awaiting the opportunity to use them and transform them into something maybe we've never even dreamed of. So again, I'll ask, what are your gifts? And how are you using them to strengthen the, your faith, first of all, and the church? Do your gifts show your faith? Hmm? Does your gift of offering show your faith? Think about it this way. God wants us to re-gift. God does not think re-gifting is tacky, okay? That's a good thing. Take the gifts that God has already given you and share them. Give them to someone else. My friends, I hope thinking about our membership vows is a challenge for us. I hope we're all doing more than thinking, too, but acting as well. And I believe we are called to stretch and grow in our faith, that even though God loves us the way we are, God does not expect us to stay this way forever. This has been a hard couple of years for the church, the likes of which we've never experienced before, not in our lifetimes anyway. 
Many of the things that we took for granted about the church have simply disappeared and will never be the same again. But we can be better. We can be the church in the world like never before. If our church is to survive into the future after this pandemic, it will only be because of how this whole congregation works together. And one of the ways we do that is by sharing our gifts with each other, with our community, and with the whole world. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you have blessed us with countless gifts to share. Help us to be more aware of our gifts and share them, and to be more attuned to the gifts of others and offer them thanks for what they share. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now it's time to share our prayer concerns and our joys and thanksgivings and the ways we've seen God at work this week. Anybody have something they want to share? Go ahead, Kathy. Uh, my niece, Leslie, uh, who lives up in Delaware, has COVID, so uh, pray for her that she gets well soon. Pray to you. Okay. Others? Um, Layla got home. Okay. And Good. she starts chemo next week. All right. Good, because I didn't have a, a recent update, so that's great. Good. Good. Um, others? Anybody? Um, I have uh, a number of, um, uh, to share, some updates. So first of all, and I haven't talked about him in a long time, but Michael Delapena has been on our prayer list for years and years and years, and not many of you know him. Um, he is, um, I, he's Suzanne's age, so he's 30 now. Um, but he came here when he was seven or eight, um, a young boy with, um, um, let's see, he has muscular dystrophy, I believe. Is that right, Linda? Cerebral palsy. Okay, so his cousin had muscular dystrophy. That's why. So cerebral CP. So um, was in a wheelchair. The first day the kid got here, we thought, oh, my God, we don't have bathrooms for this child or for anybody like this. So that's when we started work on the hall. Um, since then, um, he came with his mom. She passed away uh, a couple of years after that. And um, uh, he uh, moved to West Virginia with um, his brother, I guess. Um, and um, since then has been in um, uh, some various um, uh, programs and homes for um, folks with disabilities. Most recently, he was in the hospital, had a procedure, and is now in a nursing home um, while he heals from that and will be going to another facility um, shortly. I actually have his address. Um, his, um, one of his aunts talked to him this week and, or recently, and I talked to her this week. And um, so we're gonna, I'm going to send a card from the church um, to let him know that we, you know, we pray for him all the time and, and um, uh, boost his spirits a little bit. But, um, but I kind of wanted to give that um, update, um, even though many of you don't know Michael. I know some of you remember him. Um, at, he, was a, he was a great kid, and we, we just love him. So, so that's one. Um, the Azamar family, um, the funeral for Tony um, Jr. will be on Thursday. He'll be buried here. They're going to use the hall for... Um, uh, for refreshments or a meal afterwards. So please keep them in your prayers. It's, it's just been a, such a tough time for all of them, obviously. Our saxophonist, Matt Z, is still, um, I think, still in ICU. The last I heard um, has had some ups and downs this week, but is still pretty critical. So, so keep him in your prayers. Um, Robin's getting all her ducks in a row. Okay. So more doctor's appointments, more doctor's appointments. Yep, yep, yep. So... Tina and Larry Mann, I want to keep in our prayers. We prayed for Larry a lot um, when, um, uh, when he had COVID and was in the hospital on a ventilator and very, very critical. So, um, and um, he lives up above Stewartstown. He is, um, he's Keith Gimmel's father-in-law. So um, Larry and Tina um, were both on our prayer list at that point, and I want to ask for prayers for them again. Tina's um, stepfather died um, just a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, and her mother died on um, Friday morning, I believe. So, um, and uh, so it's been a really tough year for them. So keep Larry and Tina in your prayers. Um, uh, Grayson, we'll keep in our prayers. Ruthie always asks for that. Maggie's friend Jean with lung cancer. Um, uh, Janine's niece, Abby, um, is, is doing a bit better. Um, the Poe's, keep them in your prayers. Melvin's funeral this week went very well, um, and uh, um, I think they were, they were all pleased with all of that. So, um, and, and then our other regulars as well. Did I forget anybody? Any other updates? 
and let's bow in prayer. Oh, holy God, we give you thanks for the gifts you have poured upon us, for the talents you have given us, for the ways we can serve and bless others, for the ways we can strengthen your church to help us work our way out of this pandemic. We give thanks for our church, not just this physical place, because we know our church is so much more. Each of us is church, Lord, and we take the church into the world each day. We give you thanks for this time of worship, for times of fellowship and mission. We give thanks for our work at fundraisers and the ways we reach out into our community each day. Hear our prayers, as, uh, hear our prayers for those who struggle. We remember the firefighters who were buried this week and their families and coworkers and the police who have died and been buried this week across the nation. We pray for those families involved in that tragic car accident in Bel Air this week in which four people lost their lives. We pray for those working on the front lines, for those struggling with the effects of COVID, for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. So hear us, Lord, as we pray for all those who battle illness and infirmity, for those bearing through injustices, for those who are lost and alone. We pray especially for Dave as he serves the people of Haiti. We pray for Michael um, as he recovers from his procedure and gets ready for a new home. We pray for Linda, for Janice and Leanne, for Adam and Molly, for Caleb and his family, for Bob, for Joan and Carol and Ellen, for Craig, for Gigi and her family. We pray for Bonnie and Daryl, um, for Kathy. Um, we pray for Debbie as she awaits a kidney. We pray for little Oliver and Waylon, for Lisa as she battles cancer, for Chris in rehab, for Wanda as she does treatments for cancer as well. We pray for the Azamars and our hearts go out to them as they grieve. We pray for Matt in the hospital, for Robin as she faces breast cancer. We pray for Tina and Larry and all that they have been through this year. We pray for young Grayson, for Jean, for Abby, for the Pose. We pray for Leela and her family as she starts chemo soon. We pray for Leslie as she recovers from COVID and all those known in our hearts. Hear these our prayers in the name of our greatest gift, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now let's share our blessings. Weston and Cooper, you want to help?
this week I was looking for a great Thanksgiving that um, talked about our gifts. And I was Googling around and I didn't find exactly what I wanted, but I came across this one written by this Shannon Sullivan pastor, <laughs> who's my daughter. Uh, and uh, so, and it, it doesn't talk about gifts, but it, um, she wrote it last year for the pandemic, and, um, and I like it. So uh, I know I'm biased, but I think you'll like it too. The Lord be with you. Lord, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, creating God, even in the midst of such strange times around the world. You formed us, breathing life into us. When we got ourselves into that first strange time in the garden, you clothed us and watched over us as we went out to make our own way. Your love kept calling us back to you. And sometimes we heard it. When we stepped into freedom after bondage in Egypt, we were following your love. Even in the midst of the strange times of famines and illness, injustice and unrest, you continued to create by speaking love into our hearts through prophets and teachers, priests and widows. And so with your people on earth, on all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you for speaking love into and through Jesus Christ. He knew what it was like to grow up in strange times. He grew up under the violence of Roman occupation. He grew up impoverished, experiencing the pain of poverty. His heart was open to see the way we use religion not to nourish and strengthen, but to cut down and cover up. And even though the suffering of the world seemed insurmountable then, just as it does today, Jesus proclaimed the coming of a world defined entirely by love. He poured your love over us through healing the sick and eating with sinners, and he challenged us to love one another and ourselves as you love us all. Around the world, our tables look different and even strange today, but your table is always one defined by love. We love one another even by not partaking in one literal, literal loaf. We have these kinds of things now. We love one another by wearing masks and distancing our bodies, and even though we long to hold hands and hug and sing. The first communion meal was a fraught table just as ours is now. Jesus knew some of his friends would betray him, deny him, and abandon him. And he nourished them anyway, just as you nourish us in these strange times. You gave yourself to us in Jesus, pouring love over us, filling us with grace. You took bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You took wine from a drink from the vine and said, this cup is my new covenant, is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The disciples did not understand. We do not understand, but we remember. May our remembering connect us to you and one another, even in such strange times. So let us proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your spirit on us, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup, pointing us toward the day when we who are many will partake of one loaf and one cup. Breathe life and love into us and knit us together, even as we eat distanced from one another. Make these gifts for us be the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for this broken world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Through our communion, though our communion may feel disjointed and strange, nourish us to minister with all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your child, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. As I always remind you, be careful as you open them because I was spoke juice. Did you get one, Lester? You want one? You can go back in the basket and get one.
let's pray together. Behold, we have experienced a mystery. Ordinary bread and ordinary fruit become for us nourishing life that can transform even the grief and fear of these strange times into hope and love. May it be so not just in this meal, but each meal. And may we who have been fed go forth to feed others. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is they know we are Christians by our love. gifting this week. Share your gifts. Share the talents that God has given you with others and with the church. Go in peace now, sharing the peace of our Lord with your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Amen.